automotive world is facing major changes. And as every year, this year shines with the first motor show of the year with some great automotive highlights. Just as Detroit has been going through some upheavals for years now, mobility is also in a permanent state of change. But where are things heading? In Detroit, it's all about either models for the U.S. market or European vehicles, which German manufacturers place great hopes in for the extremely important American market. And especially at such big auto shows, the visitor really gets a feel for how everyone is searching for new avenues to take. Does the future bring electric mobility or are hybrids the solution? Maybe even in other areas like autonomous driving. There are so many ideas out there and that's how manufacturers of components are gaining in significance, for there are still many challenges to be tackled, as VDA President Matthias Wissmann knows only too well. Detroit is, einfach immer noch eine wichtige, uh, motor show. Detroit is an important motor show in the U.S. It's at the beginning of the year. It's in the city of the big three American car makers. It's a showcase, and at the same time it shows where the market is headed in 2018. It's a very essential show. That's why all the major European players are here. Over the past years, automotive suppliers have established themselves in Detroit, and for good reasons. Most cars today are developed and also produced by suppliers, if we look at the multitude of components out there. For instance, the Scheffler Group, ZF, Bosch, and Adiant Recaro are at the focus of attention. That's where visitors are already seeing technologies now, which the manufacturers won't be employing for some years yet. The link, the role of the suppliers now divided up into mega suppliers, tier one, tier two, will be clearly changing again in conjunction with e-mobility. Uh, Today, with electric drive systems, we already have the situation car makers do it themselves, large component suppliers partners do it themselves. We have decided to do it. For us, the potential and volume is so immense that both car makers, for certain reasons, as well as very competent suppliers, master value creation, have systems competence and innovative power. To that they can divide the field up amongst themselves, which leads to healthy competition. The significance and conceptual complexity of making electric engines will be much lower and different to that of combustion engines. Transmissions will be easier. In that sense, what will be happening among competitors in car manufacturing will be a very exciting topic. What's more, the German car industry is one of the largest employers in the USA. In the U.S. alone, we sell 500,000 vehicles we produce in Germany. And in the U.S., we produce 800,000 vehicles, some sold in the U.S., some in Mexico but 50% outside the U.S. That means for U.S. industry, we are a very important partner and colleague. And for the American market, we probably produce the most fascinating cars Americans know. Whenever I am in the U.S., what do Americans talk about when they hear the word Germany? Cars. Let's now take a closer look at some of the new and innovative ideas out there. Not only new models, but also new solutions, ideas and visions are gaining in significance. Besides new trends and innovative technologies, the main focus is on new car presentations and revamped models. At the number one U.S. car show, the American manufacturers, Chevrolet, Dodge, Ford, Cadillac, Lincoln and GM traditionally show off their main new automotive products. From a European standpoint, the new Jetta, the new G-Class, and the X2 are of particular interest. One after the other, though. In 2018, Volkswagen will be launching the seventh generation of the VW Jetta in the U.S. The Jetta is in the In the U.S., the Jetta is very important for us, the most important car for several generations now on the market. For many Americans, the Jetta was the first car they drove at college or at school. 
A car that is important for the brand, a car that's driven by young customers. For decades, the Jetta has been a bestseller for the brand in the region. With the new addition, we have put together a great package with a host of technical features. Its wheelbase is longer. With the M platform, fantastic driving dynamics, both comfort and sportiness. And price-wise, it's very convincing, $18,545 a bit lower than the last Jetta. It surprised many here in Detroit, and that's why we are very happy that this year, this very important car for us will be a bestseller with high volume in the coming years. Just like the Arteon, the roofline is more like a coupe. The model is adorned by a narrow radiator grille, which makes the car look wider. The engine hood has a nice domed shape. The front overhangs rather short, at the back clearly longer. All in all, the new VW Jetta will be somewhat larger than the current model. We've been able to do everything new on this new platform, and we definitely took advantage of this situation and reinvented something originally German. We look very closely at what customers want, implement it in this vehicle, in order to give the Americans something that is not on the market in this form. How important the Jetta is for the American market is difficult to say from a German standpoint. Still, how lovingly one of the very first Jettas is shown here gives us an inkling of that significance. In Detroit, Daimler unveils its new G-Class. It is something very special to the market, for it is completely new. At second glance, it might look like the old one. This old G-Class was shown once again out in front of the Cobo Hall with an absolutely spectacular look, set in a huge acrylic cube, sadly damaged in transport. But why did Mercedes feel it needed a new G-Class and one that looked like its predecessor? It was very important for us to upgrade the value of the interior and adapt it to modern luxury. And very important for customers, we needed to up the on-road performance. That was a deficit in the previous vehicle, which we definitely needed to correct without, and I have to stress this, without impairing its off-road qualities. And I think we achieved that with its double wishbone front axle and five-link rear suspension. The G-Wagon is a very special car, a legend, an icon, and that's why it was very important for us to keep it that way. We did three Three things. We cleaned it up, smoothed it out. We changed the proportions. The car is much wider. The front axle was moved forward, sportier, more self-confident. Third, we redid the entire interior, bringing up to date with the new digital world, but also respected the icon. All the typical qualities that make up the G-Class are still there. There are exactly three parts we took over. The front headlight, wiper jets. With an SUV, it's important to keep the lights clean. Secondly, all the locks. The door handles with the lock behind them. And lastly, at the rear, the spare tire cover. Also new and completely geared to future developments, the Project AMG 53. That's how all the sporty hybrid models from AMG will look in the future, just like this CLS 53. This A-Class concept was already on show before. It made its American debut here in Detroit. Audi showcases a spectacular new car, the A7 Sportback. Its length, 4 meters 97, stays the same. The cockpit and its all-wheel drive and mild hybrid system are now taken from the A8. Market launch in Europe is spring of 2018. Also new with the Audi stand, the A8 in the important long version. In Detroit, BMW premieres its brand new model by the name of X2, 
planned to come out in dealerships in the spring as a 231 horsepower X2 xDrive 28i. In Europe, the car will be launched at the same time, but with three engine versions and a starting price of 39,200 euros. Also at the BMW stand in Detroit, the new version of the i8 Coupe. No big changes. The performance of the plug-in hybrid system is upped from 362 to 374 horsepower. The electric range is extended from 37 to 55 kilometers. In addition, there are also new rims. True innovations at car shows are often only found with the suppliers who are truly committed to automotive solutions. ZF Friedrichshafen, for instance, shows off its intelligent mechanical systems with cloud networking, mobility services for tomorrow, autonomous drive, and a supercomputer for artificial intelligence. Ja, die Nias ist für uns eine der Kernmessen. For us, Detroit is one of the top shows. And America is one of the biggest car markets next to China and Europe. For us, it is important to show the newest developments. Today, we are showing what we have achieved in autonomous driving. We are negotiating with a Chinese manufacturer in cooperation with Baidu to further develop autonomous driving functions. This is also the technologies for autonomous driving. On the other hand, we are showing what we are doing with electric drive shafts. ZF has the conventional drive units along with the bridging drive units, plug-in and mild hybrids. And what we have also shown today is that this year we will start series production of a purely electric drive system. ZF has always been a first-tier supplier, and we always work closely with our customers. ZF's strength is in combining technologies. We service the main three megatrends – autonomous driving, electric mobility and safety. With the help of TRW, we are strong in combining these technologies, for autonomous driving without safety concepts does not work. This is the strength of suppliers with a broad product portfolio, and I think ZF has the broadest product portfolio in this industry. The fact that we can combine these technologies means we have a lot to offer to our customers. These future-oriented technologies are the key to being part of our automotive future. That's also how they see it at Scheffler. Especially the role of automotive suppliers seems to be getting more and more important. Detroit for us, like every year, is a good start to the new year. And, of course, we have brought along many new ideas. We all know that electric drive systems is a major focus here. We have brought along solutions, messages that will further strengthen this area. We already have eight serial production projects, interestingly, in all three areas, Europe, in China, and also here in the U.S. Not too long from now, we will start series production of a so-called P2 plug-in hybrid with an important OEM here in the U.S. We have reached the stage of knowledge, competency and added value here in hybrid drive systems in the U.S. What that means, the customer, the car maker, trusts our expertise in learning about these new things, electronics and electric mobility, and to integrate them, also in adding value to the industry, more so than in pure electrical engineers in this very difficult field of precision mechanics. E-mobility, motorsports with e-mobility, we are just at the very beginning, just like hundreds of years ago when mobility with combustion engines was still in its infancy. And that's why this motorsports competition has actually brought about solutions, which then went into large series production. From a certain point on, developments drift in different directions. In motorsports, for instance, due to the competitive nature of high performance, extremes are demanded. 
In Formula E, we do not have that yet. We are naturally headed in that direction. But in doing so, we have actually learned a lot for series production based on the solutions we have worked on. We don't use the materials, we don't implement all the individual ideas we have achieved right away in series production. But systematic functions, layouts, methods of action of electric engines, how the recuperation capacity of batteries is, vibrations in the power unit, how to deal with that, how to treat it with electric or mechanical means, how to create the software for it, we have learned a whole lot. And that's why we decided we have a subsidiary called Compact Dynamics, which joins us in working in the area of motorsports. They laid the foundation which this know-how is based on for the new generation of Scheffler's own electric drive units integrated with power electronics for the future. We are right in the middle of things. It shows we are actually transferring our motorsports experience, which happily led to a championship, to a new product, which we want to go into series production in 2019-2020 on electric or hybrid drive units. At Scheffler, special attention is also given to the area of well-to-wheel. -well. This considers the entire energy chain that goes from the well to the wheel. Adiant and Recaro have dedicated themselves to space concepts in modern cars, and that's how a particularly space-saving and still comfortable seat came about. On the other hand, there are also new technologies in the cockpit, ones that even allow a virtual visit to the doctor. Sensors monitor the health and well-being of passengers and even react in an emergency. In the future, you can consult a doctor afterwards and allow him to analyze the data and propose treatment. This system has also been further conceived to ensure safety. Imagine in a self-driving mode or self-steering, the system notices any health issues, intervening at the right time and taking over the controls, eventually even heading for the next doctor or hospital. As Adiant's premium brand, Recaro Automotive Seating presents two versions of the new Recaro Performance Seat Platform, RPSP, which covers the entire spectrum of the performance seat segments. Here is a schnitt model. Here's a cutaway model of the RPSP Recaro Performance Seat Platform. What we are showing, the seat is a modular concept where we can combine the seat surface and the backrest any way we want. Here we have shown what is technologically possible nowadays with seat foam which is 40% narrower than what is available on the market. So in making the backrest thinner while keeping it comfortable and having the right performance, these are the options we can use to have a comfortable seat, but also to save weight. Möglichkeiten, die man nutzen kann, gleichzeitig einen bequemen Sitz zu haben und andererseits auch Gewicht zu sparen. Mit der Struktur dieser With the structure of this organo backrest, this seat's cross-sectional build is the lightest on the market. We are out to achieve several things at the same time. A stiffer backrest. The stiffer, the better the feel for steering the car. Zum anderen wollen wir den. We also want the seat itself to be comfortable that you can sit in it for hours while driving without any pain or fatigue. And also by limiting the size of the seat, we gain more interior space. Compared to an ordinary seat, we gain five centimeters in depth, which here gives a much better spatial feeling in the car. Both as the primary equipment for better cars, and like so many things in life, most of the time what's better is more expensive. At the Toyota stand, the fifth generation of the full-size Avalon sedan is on center stage. The old version was 4 meters 96 in length and shared its platform with the smaller Camry, which, by the way, is the absolute best-seller in the U.S. As for the drive system, Toyota has selected an inline four-cylinder and a V6, besides the hybrid system from the Camry. Another study at the Toyota stand is the FT4X. A similar model with four doors was already on display at the 2017 Tokyo Motor Show. There it went by the name of TJ Cruiser. The car is a mixture of van and SUV. It has a very angular design to give it as much space as possible. 
Rumors have it that both the FT4X as well as the TJ Cruiser will form the basis of a new model series, the TJ Cruiser to be designed in Japan, the FT4X at the California Design Studio. Lexus uses the 2018 Detroit Motor Show to present a study by the name of LF1, a crossover vehicle which Lexus calls its full-size SUV flagship. It was created by Lexus's Cal-T Design Studio in California. Interesting, it's coupe-like rear end with its stylish LED rear lights and big roof spoiler. Also an eye-catcher, the LC500 from the Marvel movie Black Panther here with a particularly sporty look. While the entire car industry is caught up in discussions about the problems of diesel cars, Ford shows us that this diesel model has loads of potential. In the new revamped Ford F-150, a diesel engine will be at the heart of the car. In the past, more than 820,000 of these pickups were sold per year, just in the USA. With this new V6 diesel engine, Ford aims at even higher numbers. This time around in Detroit, Ford takes the wraps off a new edition of the legendary Bullet Mustang. Here the original, and now the 218 version. Ford has an even further highlight to offer, the Ford Ranger. In Europe, it's already a big success, now ready for takeoff in the USA. Like the Mustang, the Corvette is also an American icon. Now it comes out with another makeover as a ZR1. Truly fascinating. Somewhat less expensive, but nonetheless fascinating, the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport. The Chevrolet Silverado is a full-size pickup, which currently is offered in a length of up to 6 meters 9. In Detroit, Chevy shows off its new fourth generation of the 1500 version. It will not be available in the U.S. until the fall of 2018. On stage at the Detroit Kia stand, the new Forte, a car only to be offered in the U.S. For fans of the Kia Stinger, much more important news is that there will be more and even sportier models of the new Kia Top model offered, perhaps even wider and stronger. At Hyundai, we get a view of a new version of the Veloster, a model already discontinued in Germany. The three-door sports coupe with one door on the driver's side and two on the passenger side was unsuccessful in Germany. Not so in the U.S. That's why they continue to offer it there. A typical big U.S. pickup is the former Dodge Ram 1500. Now it only goes by the Ram 1500. The new generation is up to 7 meters 50 long, depending on the model. It's height up to 2 meters tall. Jeep shows off its facelifted new Cherokee. According to the car maker, it is the highest powered mid-size SUV. Sensationally new, it is not. Over the past few years, the company has been too well known for its recycling. The new front end now has two instead of three light units per side. Honda brings us another prototype. This time it's the Honda Insight. The current second generation was a car which had a lot in common with the Toyota Prius. Starting with the body shape, but also its drive system. With the 2019 Insight, the body gets much more elegant and more compatible with the masses. In addition, its hybrid drive system is more frugal. 
In North America, anyone not interested in a pickup or a big SUV often chooses a classic sedan. The Honda Accord is one of the best-selling models in the country. The new edition boasts more technology, stronger engines, and a whole host of assistance systems. GAC Motor, China's fastest growing car maker, brings to the 2018 Detroit Motor Show an elite group of cars, including a sedan, an SUV, a minivan, and the Inverge concept, a car with an interesting outlook into the GAC future. This clearly shows how avid the Chinese are in conquering the North American market. Also on display, the GA4, the GM8, and the GS8. Nissan's luxury brand, Infiniti, shows off the Q inspiration concept. A five-door coupe with a huge glass roof and very unique rear end. The car is supposed to be indicative of the new design language at Infiniti. To power the car, there's a plug-in hybrid system. Also nice to look at, Infiniti's Prototype 9. Something spectacular at GMC, a pickup with Caterpillar Drive for snowy terrain. On show at Nissan in Detroit, a new study by the name of Cross Motion, one that's said to give us a look at the brand's future SUV models. It seems developments in the automotive industry are increasingly mastering issues of electric mobility, autonomous driving, and individual solutions. International auto expert Jens Miners views the branch currently in the midst of a major upheaval and gives us some important insights. Detroit is still geprägt von den uh Detroit is still shaped by the big three, Ford, GM and Chrysler, and this year they presented pickups, trucks, by the way, also with diesel engines. A very interesting trend. For the Americans, the topic of diesel seems to be over. It's left up to the lawyers now. The niche is small, but customers are loyal. And Americans seem to be placing their faith now in diesel power. I also find it interesting that there are hardly any new electric cars to be seen. Players like Tesla are missing. There are no electric studies here. The suppliers like Scheffler, ZF, smaller ones like Röschling, that's where you see a lot, and especially with regard to electric mobility. With the OEMs, we see the classical cars dominating the scene. Some manufacturers are even handing over the domain of combustion engines to the suppliers and move their emphasis to electric cars. But if electric mobility comes as fast as politicians would like it, or the car managers, I doubt that. The disadvantages of e-mobility are still as big as ever. And also the environmental concerns observed well to wheel, looking at things in a holistic manner from building a battery to their disposal. With regard to energy production, things don't look rosy. Energieerzeugung, die Bilanz sieht nicht gut aus. Admittedly, there's still a long ways to go. It's especially the suppliers which are constantly giving new impulses and presenting new solutions. As for the most interesting models around, we also asked some experts for their opinions. We have a long day behind us at the show, and we've seen a lot. Question arises, what are the actual highlights? Klaus, what have you seen? What surprises me is that the automotive market in the U.S. seems to have shrunk. VW has been able to raise its sales here by 5.2 percent, even in light of the big diesel scandal.
And what are the highlights for you, Werner? That the new G-Class is the icon at Mercedes, in a brand new outfit. Great. As for me, I really like the LF1 from Lexus, a crossover between sedan and SUV. Also great, and we feel that there's a lot to see here at the show. It's truly evident that Detroit has lost some of its brilliance. Still, developments seem to have remained just as exciting and definitely will give us just as much to talk about in the future.